this is from a new difficult series that Ellen has been wanting to work on for the last couple of years. Um, these are, I call these my guilt poems, and um, I wanted to write about a type of parenting guilt, not like I don't play with my kids enough or I don't take enough time for myself kind of guilt that's in all the parenting magazines, but like the real guilt, <laughs> the deeper stuff that nobody wants to write about or even talk about. So. I'm just gonna read you one for the series. <laughs> They're a little intense. Um, so, okay, so this one's conflict. When you tuck the blankets around the hush of his body, turn off the nightlight above his head, listen to his even breathing, and touch your lips to his warm, sleep red cheek. This is when it knocks you back out of the room presses you down into your own bed and lies down beside you, whispering all night to trouble your dreams. You cannot believe the day you had. Watching his lips part soundlessly in the darkened room, you cannot believe the sweet, beautiful child was ever anything else. You resolve that tomorrow will be different. You will do better. You will be patient and soft-spoken and kind. You will count to ten. Use your words. Keep your hands to yourself. But morning comes with its assault of noise and five-year-old limbs, its torrents of contrariness and button-pushing, head-butting, sibling strangling struggle. You pry his fingers from your arms. You wipe his spit from your face. Carry him sideways under your arm to the safe place behind the locked door. You crumble like a tower of blocks, your alphabet unfamiliar, tumbling from your mouth in some changeling voice you don't want to accept as your own. Love is not in question. You know you would trade every minute of your life for one of his. Throw yourself in front of that bus. Give him the last swig of water. Offer yourself in his place to any stalking thing in the night. But you have to say this. You need to say this. You know you can't be the only one need to believe that you can't be the only one, the only mother who doesn't always enjoy the company of her child, the only one who dreads weekends and snow days, who counts the minutes until bedtime, until she can sit for one moment alone in a still house. So when you kiss him goodnight, when you lie down at last in your night quiet room, you force yourself to remember how today he made up a new game and invited you to play. Today, after the screaming, the tears, the toy curled at the closed door, he sat on your lap and you rocked him and nuzzled his every which way hair. There were moments. And someday he will be big. He will not need you like this. His spindly, never at rest form will no longer fit into your lap. He will not remember that these days left you broken. Bouncing effortlessly from time out to spreading out puzzles to outside play, he does not know this is hard. You are the only one lying awake in the darkened room. You must roll over, push that shadow out of bed, and pitch it down the stairs. You must remember that when the child wakes, he always wakes singing. Mm. Mm. Yes. Yes. Yes.